had to make the touristy stops along the way. And one of the first ones we hit was Bucky's right down here in South Carolina. If you've never heard of Bucky's before, they are definitely a travel destination from snacks to different beverages to full on meals to souvenirs. It's probably one of the best gas stations slash convenience stores slash rest stops I've been to. All right, we're about half an hour from the Florida line. We're here in Georgia. We made really good progress. Been driving for about six ish, seven ish hours, making good time. Can't wait to see everybody soon in Miami. Here we come, baby. Now, another stop we had along the way was to Jacksonville. Now, Emily and Cam didn't know, but I had planned out what time to get into Jacksonville so we could hopefully see the sunrise. So, of course, we had to make our trip to Daly's place a.k.a. TIAA Bank Stadium, where the Jaguars play, just because of all the iconic AEW history. And being that this was a wrestling road trip, we figured, why not? So here we're just kind of walking around, checking everything out, and we ended up meeting a security guard in a golf cart. No, not that golf cart that Sammy got hit with, but I gave Cam swag. And it wouldn't be a road trip without getting lost. So on the way to breakfast, we got into Orlando. I accidentally chose the restaurant that was right on Disney property near the Magic Kingdom. There it is, circled. But Emily had never been to this restaurant. It's a staple in the wrestling world. It's great. It's awesome. It's Bob Evans, baby. But that was all on our ultimate trip to get to Hogan's Beat Shop in Orlando, Florida. Now, Emily and I had been to the Clearwater one, and I had been to Orlando. But Emily hadn't been to Orlando. Neither had Cam. He hasn't been to one. So here we are being complete tourists. Again, it's a wrestling road trip. As soon as you walk in, you're faced with this giant wrestling ring that you can get pictures in. And Hulk Hogan comes about once a month from what the staff was telling us. Last time I was here, they actually had the Viper for when he debuted on WCW, which I thought was really cool. So there's all kinds of Hulk Hogan merchandise, wrestling merchandise, figures, belts, t-shirts, towels, collectibles. Look at this sweet, I mean, cardboard cutout, life-size Hogan shopping. But then you have my all-time favorite statue that I see every time I go there. It's when he was in Rocky Three. How can you not like Thunder Lips, ladies and gentlemen? That's one of the benefits of going. And then check out these belts. These belts are awesome. You can take a picture with a real one, or you can buy a replica to bring on the boat. Definitely worth this trip down to our international drive in Orlando. Beautiful Miami, I'm ready to fucking go for this Jericho Cruise. No, they have it all roped off. But it's for lights. There must be talent down there. Or a ring crew. Swaggo! 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 
knows there can only be one dwarf king on this cruise. If I, and, and if, if I see that swaggle fucker, I'm throwing him overboard, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. Scissor me timbers. 
Jesus got scissored on the high seas. After a great first day of Fozzie and wrestling, it was time to go watch Max Caster's performance and end the night with karaoke. A great way to end the first day of the Jericho Cruise. Damn, it feels good to be elite. Come on, slay. Damn, it feels good to be elite. One more. Damn, it feels good to be elite. Trying to find a balance like I'm on the top rope. I remember when I thought I might not grow. Thinking I would quit when my hype got low. Let it hit you in the chest, how the mic drop goes. Trying to find a balance like I'm on the top rope. I remember when I thought I might I would stay in the ring till I'm limping and so hurt. Still thinking slug, I ain't picking the clover. About a year ago, your boy went platinum. Picking up steam, got a little more action. Blew out my knee while I'm sitting on the verge. A week later, my girl had kicked me to the curb. All alone at home on my phone in bed. Shook crew taught me all the legend instead. I came back from the almost dead. Yeah. 
was day two of our journey on the Jericho Cruise, and you can literally call this the calm before the storm. Stay tuned later. On this day, we had a picture with Jericho, some meet and greets, and some autograph sessions, which I'll throw some pictures in here right about here. I can see it from the place I'm standing. I can feel it from the way you move. So just before Fozzy ended, I ran down to our room to go grab my Gangrel shirt because we were taking a group picture on Deck 13 with the TDS show, thanks to Cruz Kane, the producer, coming up with the idea for the Gang of Grills, coined by Taryn. We were basically going to all dress in puffy shirts and Gangrel attire and take a sweet picture. I'll insert it at the end of this clip. So here you can see I'm walking back from the spinnaker. There's Marlon in his sweet cosplay. He killed it all four days. So we're getting up to go to Sky 13. And this is also when we heard the unfortunate announcement that not only we were not going to the Bahamas tomorrow due to a very bad storm, but also wrestling was canceled for the rest of the night and there'd be other activities scheduled instead tomorrow morning. So this is where I'm showing you kind of where I'm walking the rest of fan night right before Fozzie ended, right before we got the announcement. And here's a picture of the gang grills. As you can see, it was super windy. The storm was really raging. That's why they had to cancel going to the Bahamas the next day. And they were just trying to get away from the storm. 
but we didn't want that to ruin our night. We knew that, yeah, they were canceling wrestling, but we still had comedy, we still had karaoke, we still had other adventures. Um, Brian even chopped a guy. So I'll insert the clip here in just a moment, but there was a guy who was walking around, I believe it was from California, and he had a sign basically, it's my birthday, give me some drinks. And Brian had the drink package, he used it well, and decided to chop him to give him two drinks. Well, it became a cruise tradition because this poor man was chopped multiple freaking times. So shout out to you, whoever you are. You took it like a champ. You let Brian chop you pretty much the entire weekend. He got you drinks. It was all fun and games. Um, again, we weren't going to let a storm hang us down. We had plenty of activities to do that night, and they did a great job by improvising the schedule. Shout out to Six Man. They set up a Q&A with Jericho and all kinds of other events in place of the Island Day.
All right, ladies and gentlemen. I want to give a shout out to all you guys because you guys have shown me so much fucking love. I love you guys more. From the bottom of my heart, this has been one of the coolest experiences of my life, simply from the love you've shown, the comments you have made to me. Uh, I love you guys, but also you are right. Danny Garcia's a wrestler. Yeah. One day, he's a young kid, he's only 24. When I was a 24, I was a wild fucking animal. I didn't know who I was yet either. That kid is the fucking future. Thank you, God. Higher than Flip Gordon. Oh. Tomorrow is me and Flip 
one-on-one -on -one to become the Chris Jericho Oceanic Champion. And flip. Who's out here? Who's out here? And flip. I know you won the tournament a couple years ago, but you're not winning tomorrow because I am going to become the King of the Sea. What a great last day it was. It was gorgeous views. We still had one more night of Fozzie, one more night of wrestling, the finals of the Oceanic Tournament. We had karaoke. We had meet and greets, which I'll throw in here after. We had so much to do. This last day went by so fast. This vacation went by so fast, but it is worth every penny, and I'm so glad we're coming back for Five Alive. was presented to, to wrestle Nick Gage, and I'm thinking, no fucking way. Like, absolutely not. Uh, his Dark Side of the Ring just came out, and I tried watching it. I couldn't even get through it. It was disgusting. Like, I'm gonna wrestle this fucking criminal. This guy's gonna fucking kill me, right? Um, but I knew it would create buzz. I, I couldn't anticipate the amount of buzz it would create. It, it changed my whole career. Like, I'm, the Deathmatch King had one fucking Deathmatch, right? Um, but I'm like, yeah, I'll wear like all white, like white pants, like white pads, a white shirt. I'll get like a couple trickles of blood on there. I was fucking, my shirt was red. It was drenched. I was covered in fucking blood, but I loved it. I could understand why people, I, I always felt like, why the fuck do people do this shit? And then when I was in there, the adrenaline and the fans and just seeing the blood and tasting the blood, I fucking loved it. I, maybe I'm fucking sick, but it was incredible. <laughs> Talk a little bit about, um, the, the, I'm just thinking of the death match that I had with Nick uh, and, the, and the introduction of Glass, which is a whole different world as well. And obviously Nick knew a lot about the glass and he said, make sure you get tempered glass because it breaks a little bit easier or like it's a little bit more modern. They were dissolvable stitches, they were not, and I got infected. I got infected. And then when I went to like the doctor, they were still pulling glass out of my back like weeks later. Wow. It was like, you couldn't clean this fucking out? It was, it was horrible. You said you still have glass in your back? I, I'm sure there's like there's still like some weird pieces in my shoulder because there's like these little tiny pieces and if you don't get them out right away and you heal up, that's it pal, you know, you're fucked. You had any glass experience, Ruby? Uh, not any glass experience, but I have done tubes before I did um, Queen of the Death for IWA Mid-South. It was in the backyard of a strip club called The Rustic Frog. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, in 90 degree weather against a woman by the name of Lou Dark, um, who I believe is from Mexico, and she's a crazy bitch. Like, in the best way. She's awesome and fearless, and I didn't have a lot of experience with it. And I, I think I like tubes. That baking powder thing is brilliant, by the way. But I think I like tubes just for the, the pop that happens when you get hit with them. 
it kind of scares you and everybody else around you. So it's I that's really my only experience with it. But yeah, that was an, an interesting tournament. But it makes the sound though, right? Yeah, that yeah, pop that when it when it breaks is awesome. Let's talk
claimed in the house. You know we about to win again. J-A-S means just a claim scissorin. <laughs> You call yourself Cool Hand, I don't think it works at all. Your palms gotta be sweaty with all the damn jerking off. Don't let that rock, Don't let that rock. Garcia's mom is out watching tonight. She only out here so she can see my ass in these tights. Oh!